testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you happen to be in this wonderful world. This is Michael Baxter, the creator of Someone's Bones, and I'm here to mix things up a little bit today. I've decided uh, to go ahead and do a little bit of a podcast instead of an all written stories like our website has been. We are primarily a, a written website, but I thought a little bit of diversity might be a good thing. So I'm going to start doing a weekly podcast during which I talk a little bit about the stories that are currently of interest on the website, the ones that are gathering the most attention, some of the less mentioned articles, and I'm also going to talk about some things that we haven't had time to write about but still are important in society today and that really do need to be discussed. Uh, I'm going to be ad-libbing this. I have not written a script, so I'm not sure how this will go. I hope that you find this entertaining. I hope I can enlighten you, entertain you, provide you with some information on what I am trying to accomplish, and hope that you'll stay tuned. And if all goes well, I will continue to produce a podcast at least a week. Uh, I'm doing the audio track first here. Not sure how it's going to come out sounding. I'll go ahead and add in some slides and images after I go ahead and do my commentary, and hopefully it will all mix nicely together uh, for a decent presentation. Longtime listeners might realize that we have shifted away from writing and producing geopolitical stories, articles that deal with governmental overreach and abuse, and have instead shifted to what is commonly referred to as pseudoscience, specifically stories about Nibiru or Planet X. There's a very good reason for this. Our metrics have determined that the majority of readers who come to someone's bones are interested in reading, learning, or being entertained by information on the dark star and the, its seven orbiting planets that, according to many, are currently hurtling toward planet Earth with the possibility of impending disaster. So, based on that, I feel that we would be remiss if we did not provide our readers with the articles that are most important to them. So for the time being, I will primarily focus on Nibiru. That's not to say I will not inject other articles into the, the website there's a lot of information going on in the world that needs to get out there. Information that the mainstream media refuses to talk about. And I will get that out to to the best of my ability. But be aware, for the time being, Planet X, Nibiru, is going to be our primary focus. Okay. One thing I want to discuss today is the difference between dissenting opinions, and outright shilling. When it comes to Nibiru, everyone has an opinion, and it is the right of everyone to express an opinion on any subject, including Nibiru Planet X. However, there is irrefutable evidence that a massive campaign is underway, has been underway for decades, to debunk any legitimate information surrounding Nibiru. Pro or con, your average internet poster is going to state an opinion on a subject, sometimes backed by fact, often not. Now, shills, on the other hand, are a different breed. They are tricky little animals, often paid to prowl internet forums, and psychologically present compelling yet baseless arguments to sway public opinion. They are convincing, and often they have received paid training on how to use emotionally charged arguments to confuse an issue. I don't mean to name shame, but there are some websites out there that do have an abundance of shills. For example, Godlike Productions is probably the most egregious example of this in the shilling game. Mention the word Nibiru or Planet X and GL on GLP, and a certain someone magically shows up without fail. During one of our earliest argue, uh, articles, which we published back in May, a person we interviewed called out a GLP member as a suspected shill. That person was outraged, emailed us, threatened to sue us. Even though we never mentioned his name, the only thing we mentioned was his handle, uh, his screen name, his moniker. 
in the end, we did retract his name from the piece, not out of legal obligation, because it's never our intention to cause personal or financial harm to anyone. Subsequently, Godlike Productions got very upset at us, and any mention of our website name is now grounds for an immediate ban on Godlike Productions. So, whatever you do, do not mention someone's bones on Godlike Productions or else. You'll probably get a ban, uh, a permanent ban, from their website. The moral to this piece is, is that if you support the existence of Nibiru, Planet X, and you post your thoughts, be prepared to face ridicule, ridicule, ridicule suspensions, and bans from a lot of different websites out there. Alright, the next thing I want to do is dive into our mailbag and our comment bag and answer a few questions that seem to be common, maybe even dispel a myth or two. Our articles tend to generate a fair number of comments. Sometimes I have time to respond to, it, uh, to, respond to them, sometimes I don't. So I'm just going to go ahead here and try and answer a few questions that I've been asked. Uh, Anonymous writes, someone's bones is crap. You're nothing but a clickbait, get rich quick scheme. Let me address that if I may. Get rich quick. That is funny. Uh, I'll talk about that for a moment. First, yes, we do use AdSense to offset our server costs. In May, we earned a whopping $30. In June, about 90 a little bit better. July has been a good month. We'll probably make about 400 bucks for July. However, our monthly expenses exceed $200 a month between server costs and a few other expenses. So, for skeptics, do the math. Between the expenses and the time that it takes to produce these articles, no one here is getting rich from this website. Unlike a lot of other Nibiru Planet X websites, we are not selling books, we're not promoting books, we do not even ask for donations. <laughs> Hell, if I were to get rich from this, I'd love it. But that isn't happening, it's not, it is not going to happen. This is a very niche topic, and it's not, it is not generating massive amounts of revenue. If you think otherwise, you're living in a fantasy land and have no idea how, how Google AdSense works. Plus... Unlike many other Planet X sites, we produce all original content. We do not scrape content from other websites and copy and paste it to our own. Uh, that's all I am going to say on that without defending any further. Another gentleman, gentleman identified only as Doug, emailed me and asked, Who are you? How do you get your information? Why don't you reveal your sources? Why do some of your articles seem more funny than serious? Good questions. Well, Doug, if you're listening, I'm going to try and answer some of them for you. Before becoming involved in alternative, alternative media, I worked as a writer-journalist for a few mainstream publications. A uh, small-town newspaper progressed to a citywide newspaper and, for a short time, worked as a syndicated columnist where the column was published across 20-ish newspapers around the country. During that time, I cultivated relationships with sources in various fields, many of whom I am still in touch with. I rely on them, as well as other people I reached out to, to help gain information on particular subjects, most recently Planet X Nibiru. Many of them I will not name because it would be irresponsible of me to compromise their employment and possibly their lives by outing them in public. That, that's on that. As to humor or satire associated, associated with our stories, I have always stated openly that we inject levity into our pieces to temper the current madness surrounding the Nibiru culture. We try to present compelling stories while toning down the hysterical insanity of it all. We don't want to see people hurting themselves, driving off cliffs, or harming themselves in any way because they think it's better to end it all now rather than wait for Nibiru to show up and smash the earth to pieces. So if it bothers people that we sprinkle humor into our articles or publish some articles that might seem outlandish, so be it. This is our modus operandi. This is not to say that we believe our articles are false or that we are trying to be deceptive. 
we simply want to tone down the Nibiru rhetoric a little bit. Uh, finally, a frequent commenter, Abdiel Schwitzer, writes, Why you make lies, Putin? Abdiel, as a loyal reader and frequent commenter to our stories, you should realize that we do not hate Putin and often speak of him in a positive way. The information we present on Putin and Russia comes from usually reliable sources and we publish that information because we believe it to, to be reasonably accurate. It is not meant to make Putin look bad or on the other hand, well, I mean, on the other hand, we think Obama is a total jerk. Putin, not so much. The hot topic over the past few weeks, ever since the Dr. Shimshuk fiasco has sort of died down, has revolved around a series of linked articles we've produced, starting with Putin warns Obama, tell the world about Nibiru, or I will, and ending with Netanyahu's plea to Obama to stop Putin's disclosure. I don't have time to cover all the information on the seven articles in the time I have to do this little audio cast here, so please take the time to read them. But the bottom line is that since 1983, the United States and Russia have been involved in a celestial chess match where Russia has wanted to talk about Nibiru and the White House has gone as far as threatening to nuke Moscow to prevent that from happening. Our idea for this story originated when we spoke to a former KGB and GRU agent, a Nibiru whistleblower, whose credentials we deemed authentic. Based on his information and that gathered from other sources in both reliable sources in both Russia and Washington, we decided to run with the story and print information that we felt is important and needs to get out there. The end of the story has yet to be written, and we hope to provide additional information soon when Putin's 10-day alleged moratorium on the Bureau disclosure expires. Now, people often ask, why don't I see this in the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times? Get real. Mainstream media colludes with the government to keep this kind of information quiet. This has been happening, this has been proven, long before someone's bones started printing. Now, am I 100% sure everything is accurate? Absolutely not. I am far from perfect. Perfect. I publish information based on my research, or which I gather from what I believe to be experts in their field of study. I do vet people to the best of my ability. When I am wrong, I happily own up to it. In fact, one of our regular commenters, a well-known media personality who was listened to and watched by millions of people, now, I won't name him because he might not appreciate that, but if you follow our comments, you probably know who I'm talking about. Anyway, to paraphrase, he asked me, or he commented, if this website will fold, rebrand, disappear, or if I will admit that we were wrong when Nibiru doesn't show up in 2017. My answer is that I will absolutely admit that our sources provided information that did pan out. We are not infallible here. People were wrong about Nibiru in 2000, 2003, 2008, 2012, and they might be wrong about what's going to happen regarding Nibiru and planet Earth in 2017. Who knows? And it's just occurred to me that I don't yet have a validated YouTube account and my 15 minutes are almost up. Read someone's bones. Follow other truth seekers. People like Steve Olson, Rex Bear Oblique Project, Marshall Masters. There are a lot of people out there trying to get information about Planet X out to the public. The truth is out there, as the adage goes. Next week, I'll try and get a full hour podcast here. Thank you very much for listening. This is Mike signing out from Summons Bones.